Level 3.4 is about quadratic models and building quadratic functions from data. So we're going to be doing three story problems and one problem that's going to involve our calculator. So make sure that you have that handy. Okay, so the marking did the first one, maximizing revenue, uh, which we should see from economics, but revenue equals the price times the unit sold. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind. So the marketing department for Texas Instruments has found that when certain calculators are sold at price P per unit, the number X of calculators sold is given by the demand equation here. Express R as a function of the price P. Okay, so as we said for A, the revenue, let's say in terms of P, is just the demand times the cost or the price. So we have 21,000 minus 150p, excuse that, that should be minus, times p. So if I just distribute that, I get r of p equals 21,000 p minus 150p squared. What is the maximum price? What is the maximum revenue based off of this? Okay, whenever we're talking about a quadratic and a maximum, find vertex. So to find the vertex, what's our h? Our h is going to be negative b, which I'm just going to rewrite this equation. So our A is negative 150, our B is 21,000, and our C is 0. Okay? So negative B, negative 21,000 over 2 times A. So that's negative 21,000 over negative 300. So those signs change. I can cross off two of these zeros. And 21 divided by 3 is 7, so 210 divided by 3 is 70. So h, our vertex, which is our p-value, is 70. So our maximum price would be $70. That's our price. What's the maximum revenue? Well, that's our k. So if you plug in 70 here, you get... 21,000 times 70 minus 150 times 70 squared. Now, if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get 735,000. How many units are sold at this price? Well, this is a different question, and the unit sold is given by this x equation. So the number of units sold, x equals 21,000 minus 150 times 70. So again, if we type this into our calculator, we're going to get 10,500 units. And if we graph this function, so if we pull up our graphing calculator, and I'm just going to go to our home screen, and we're going to go to new document. I'm not going to save that. We're going to go to graph, and let's just zoom in. So I'm going to type in our revenue, 21, x minus 150 x squared. If I hit graph, you can barely see it. That's because I want my window to have a maximum of 800,000. So I'm just going to go menu, window, and then I'm going to go to fit, which is A. You hit enter here. So we still don't see a lot. So menu, window, window settings. And I'm going to say from zero, we know our maximum was about 
150. And then our scale, our y scale is from 0 and let's say 1 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Now there's my graph, which better fits our data. Okay? So that takes care of example one. Example two, maximizing the area of it enclosed by a fence. Okay, a farmer has 2,000 yards of fence to enclose a rectangular field. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that encloses the most area? Huh. This gives you very little to work with. So what I would suggest is we first start off with a rectangle. And whatever you want to call the sides. One side is our length. I'm just going to call that x. The other side is our width. What we're trying to maximize is our area. Area is given by length times width. So in this case, it's going to be x times w. Well, the only other thing is we have 2,000 uh, yards. But I can figure this out. This total perimeter, or 2x plus 2w, equals 2,000. OK, that's a little bit better. So I'm going to solve one of my variables uh, using perimeter. So here I'm just going to solve for x. So I have 2x equals 2,000 minus 2w. Divide everything by 2, I get x equals 1,000 minus w. I'm going to plug this back into my original equation. So I have area equals, well, I'm replacing x with this. So 1,000 minus w times w, which is 1,000 w minus w squared. All right, now I have a quadratic which I will have a max here. So find the vertex. So I want my h and my k. Right? So my a is negative 1. My b is 1,000. So to find h, it's negative b over 2a, which is negative 1,000 over negative 2, or 500. So my h, in this case, is 500. So what are the dimensions here? If the width, so this is, h is my width. So if this is 500, then x also has to be 500. because we had 1,000 minus w, right? So then my maximum area, or my k, is if I plug this back in over here, k, which is my area, is going to be 1,000 times 500 minus 500 squared. What I also know, that this is going to be 500 times 500, which is... 25 with four zeros. So just to make sure, twenty five two hundred and fifty thousand. So that's two hundred and fifty thousand square yards. And that's five hundred yards for my width, five hundred yards for my feet. The question was asking us, what's the most area? So my most area is there. Hopefully that problem solving makes sense to you guys. Uh, we got one more story problem on the back. So example three, uh, for all my physics students, past and present, is a projectile motion problem. So a projectile is fire fired from a cliff 500 feet above the water at an inclination of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So what that means is you have this cliff and something's getting fired, and then it's coming back down, and it's going to hit the water somewhere out here. 
uh, with a muzzle velocity of 400 feet per second. So in physics, we are given this equation for the height. So negative 32x squared over 400 squared plus x plus 500, where x is the horizontal distance from the base of the cliff. Find the maximum height. Let's, let's do this. So I want to show you a slightly different way of doing this. So again, we're going to go to our calculator. We're going to go to the new document. We're going to say, no, we want to say this. And we're going to add a graph. Okay? What we want to enter is our equation. So parentheses. And then if you hit control, just as a shortcut, if you hit control and division. So let's get that on the screen. Control, then division. See what's underneath? It gives you a little fraction. So I'm going to hit that. Control there. Now I can just write negative 32 x squared over 400 squared plus x plus 500. And then I'm going to hit enter. And I can't see anything. OK. So menu, window. And I'm going to do window settings. So again, I want to kind of figure out what this is going to look like. So I'm going to start it off at 0. I'm going to have my maximum scale be out to, I don't know, 6,000. Likewise, my height, the maximum height I have, I mean, it starts at 500 feet, but it goes up. So my lowest height is going to be 0. Let's say my highest height is 3,000. So I'm going to look. And just for, for my sake, I'm going to give us a little bit lower than the origin uh, so we can really see where it hits the water. And because our scale is off. Let's say I make it. OK. So here's the nice thing about graph using the graphing calculator is I'm going to use menu because it says find the maximum height, right? Instead of doing all the algebra work that we've been doing previously, I'm going to go to analyze graph maximum. I'm going to go to the left click. Let's try that again. I'm going to go to analyze graph maximum. Select my lower bound, go over, go over, go over, select my upper bound. And then I see that at 2.5 E3. So what does that mean? 2.5 E3. That means 2.5 times 10 to the third power is going to be my height, or my x value, my distance covered. And 1.75 E3 gives me my height. So what does that mean? Let's just zoom back out. That said, at my max, which is my vertex, it was 2.5 E3, comma, 1.75 E3. Well, this E just means times 10 to the third. So that's really 2,500 comma 1,750. The x is my distance. My k or my h is my distance. My 1,750 is my height. So the question was find the maximum height, which is 1,750 feet. Likewise. If I bring this calculator back, I can find out where it hits here. How? Again, if I hit menu, then I go to analyze graph, I want to find a zero. So I go to zero. And I just go to the left, highlight over, over to the right. And there is my zero right there at 5.4, which if we can see that, 
5.46 E3. So my zero is 5.46 times 10 to the third, which I think it, if you find it even more exact is 5,458 feet is where the splashdown is. So that's another way we can use our calculator instead of doing all the algebra that we could for each one of those problems previously. Last up is example four, uh, which is similar to the linear regression problems that we did. Uh, so we're, again, we're gonna use our calculator. So again, if we're at our home screen, I'm gonna go to new document. Uh, and no, I'm not gonna save these. What we wanna first create is our list and spreadsheet. So we're gonna be making a scatter plot uh, for our X value for our A column, I'm just gonna call that X, hit enter. And then for B is our Y, which is our yields. So now I'm just gonna enter this data table in here. So as quickly as I can, it starts with zero, zero, five, five, 10, 10, 15, 15, 20, 20, 25, 25, 30, 30, 35, 35, 40, and 40. Okay. Likewise, I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top. I got two of everything, right? So it goes four, six, 10, seven, 12, 10, 15, 17, 18, 21, 20, 21, 21, 22, 21, 20, 19, 19. So just as a quick overview, did I type all of that in correctly? Looks good. Now, like we did before, we're gonna hit Control Document to create a new document. And we're gonna go down to Add Data and Statistics. So again, I go back to my X axis, I select my X variable, go to my Y, select my Y column. And I can see that it's starting to curve, right? So if I look at A, it says, draw a scatter plot. What type of relation exists? This is not quite linear. You can see that it starts going back down, right? So this is a quadratic relation. Makes sense. We're doing quadratic relationships right here. So find the quadratic function of best fit. So just like we did with linear functions, zoom in just a little bit. If you hit menu and we go down to analyze, we want regression. This time we're gonna do show quadratic regression. And you can see we have this thing here, which is not easy to read, right? So again, we're gonna hit control document and we're going to add a calculator, menu, statistics, statistical calculations, quadratic regression, we want the X value there. We want our Y value here. And it's gonna input quadratic regression. We have our AX squared plus BX plus C, which makes sense. Here's our A, B, and C. So use the graphing calculator to find the quadratic function of best fit. So we're just gonna keep it to three decimals. Let's zoom out just a little bit. So our A is negative 0 0.0171. Our B is 1.0765. And then our C is 3.893. So our quadratic is Y equals negative 0 0.0171 x squared plus 
x plus 3.893. So now it says use the function to determine the optimal amount of fertilizer. Well, I'm going to do one more thing. So I'm going to graph what we just wrote. So control, we're going to add a graph. And what we just wrote in was negative 0 0.0171 x squared plus 1.076 x plus 3.893. There's our graph, right? I want to then change my window so I can see this. So I'm going to zoom fit. And just a little more zoom out. We'll zoom out just a little more so we can see it. There we go. So now what we want to find, determine the optimal output. We want to find a max, right? So once we can see it, we're going to go to analyze graph and we're going to find a maximum. So now we just go a little to the left and we go a little to the right and we click it and we can see that at 31.5 comma 20.8. So that means our fertilizer 31.5 comma 20.8. So the fertilizer pounds And this is our yield. So use the function. So let's see. Use the function to determine the op optimal amount of fertilizer. So that's 31.5 pounds per 100 square feet. Predict the crop yield when the optimal amount is applied. That would be 20.8 bushels. And then graph the quadratic function to your scatter plot. Well, we've already done that. If we move this back over, we see that our line of best fit is that one. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, if you need any more explanation on using your calculator, be sure to ask me because uh, they are quite helpful uh, when we're solving these. One more section to go and they were, then we are done with level three.